Um, do you, w- would you say this experience make you a better teacher? Yes. Also. Absolutely. Um, when I first started as a nurse, um, I had I had a couple of uh, preceptors as a nurse. My first job as a nurse was at a nursing home. Wow. And, I've seen uh, homes. Yeah, man. 36 oh, patients every night. Um, 36 patients every night. I, listen, I cried on my way in. I cried on my way home. My favorite day of the week was Friday that I didn't have to work weekends. Okay. And the worst day was the Sunday before the Monday that I had to go back to work. I was miserable, right? Wow. But there was, there's like a theme, right? So, um, starting nursing, my first job, my my training, my preceptorship was weird. It was very challenging for me, obviously, because it was new. I'm like, okay, because it's new. Um, I then went to Spalding in Cambridge, and that was challenging in itself because, of course, it's new. And then I started as an MP at MGH, and I started, and it was it was a challenge, but it was weird. Um, those challenging transitions has really helped me support my students the best. What I learned in those transitions is that I didn't accept the challenge of a new thing. Mm. You are new thing. Accept it. And boy, will you have issues until you accept, right? <laughs> you, you'll have issues until you accept. Yeah. You can it, doing it, but still have not accept your reality. I was excited about it, new position, but I didn't accept it. And until I knew the turning point in all of those transitions was I had to accept where I'm at, accept that it's a, a learning curve, yeah. accept that I'm going to put in more work, right? And the other part of it was um, I didn't realize my unique contribution to the spaces that I would be occupying. Mm. Whoa, 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 whoa. My unique, not not because there's there's multiple nurses here and some of might be Haitian. Um, okay. As I progressed in my career, the number of Haitian or Black nurses in the spaces that I infiltrate very, very rapidly started to decline, right? Okay. And that's okay, but there's a unique contribution that you bring as the individual person that God has made you to be in the spaces that you occupy. Your purpose? Your purpose, yes. Your purposeful being, your purposeful space in the places that you occupy. Wow. And now with my students, even when they're months and years away from graduating, we talk about purpose. We talk about where your where where your desires, where you want to be. And then when you get there, what do you do? Wow. When we started this podcast, we talked about who are you, right? And he answered, yeah. who am I? Answer the question, who am I? How, what do I identify to be? That person you bring everywhere. That person you bring everywhere. Some of my struggles and my transition in my profession I was bringing my physical self there, but the unique parts of me, I was not letting express. Really? So I struggled because I suppressed who I really was to conform um, to a place that I'm in. Um, and you could, you could take it two ways. You could say, well, Brenda, were you being fake? Not necessarily. No, not at all. Use a vision. I'm reserved. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm showing parts of me because I'm reserved. But man, is there freedom. Wow. When you unapologetically, unapologetically accept who you are. When I tell you it's from it's from dealing with coworkers to patients, I'm I'm big on nicknames. I mean, if you if you're a coworker of mine and I don't have a nickname for you, that means we're probably not that close, but that's okay. We'll work on it, right? Okay. But even even the way I deal with my patients, the way I greet my patients, the way I talk to them. We have this understanding in a relationship. That's that's all of me, right? This is all of me. The way I converse with um, my colleagues, that's all of me. 
unapologetically, it's me. Mm. And and a lot of times in the, the world that we're living in right now, there's this inability to understand the essence of a unique person being part of a team, whether it's a team at work, whether it's a team in a relationship, with a team in your community, being your true self, what that means. Because until you do that, you're kind of robbing everybody around you. Um, you're robbing them the, the experience of getting to know the true you. How long have you been teaching? <laughs> Teaching 20, teaching 2018. So about three years. It's going to be three years. Yeah. All right. Do you, can you spot a student like you can see or you mm-hmm. can feel who they are just on your first meeting with them or first time seeing them? Or do you, it, does it take your time to kind of. Mm. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, identify if there's someone who's like you know, struggling and going through something. I'm I'm a big reader of vibes. Like, I okay. I if I'm not comfortable, there's something. There's a reason why I'm not comfortable. Okay. And usually, if I'm not comfortable, not just just the students, but just any space that I'm in, I just I, I I'm reserved. I don't really talk much, and I just understand the landscape of the people that I'm dealing with. But for my students. I try to observe their behaviors, their contribution in class, and majority of the time, if I'm if I'm understanding that someone might be struggling, um, I really do take the time to make an appointment to meet with them, not waiting for them to struggle, then make an appointment. No, reaching out. And I found that you know one of my students, <laughs> boy, so. We were teaching, I was teaching a lab once and, you know, she came in with a belly shirt on and I had to send her home. I was like, this is, you know, you're not in a uniform. Um, it's not okay. She was very upset. I mean, I can't have you in lab in a belly shirt and everybody else, you know, in their uniforms. It's just a rule that this school has implemented. It's just, it is what it is. And it, it was a little hard for me because I felt bad and, but I had to do what I am charged to do. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And you know, she had to come back, repeat the lab, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember seeing her in class and um, first time she came in, you know, it was yeah, okay. The second time I asked everybody, you know, after class to go once they're done and I asked her to stay and said, you know, I, you know, the belly shirt, whatever you've made up the lab, what's, what's going on? Is everything okay? anything you want to talk about she was very reserved and finally it came out you know one of her parents were ill and she was the main caregiver she is the only child while she bears the weight of trying to get through nursing school and has failed (laughs) a nursing course in the past the same institution and is riddled with fear that she might not complete this semester Um, And then there was financial strain too. So those moments teach me to be sensitive to those that are around me um, and really pay attention, especially with students. Uh, I do this with colleagues too. Um, Sometimes I could tell when people are off and there's always something there. Um, And if they're comfortable, we chat. And if not, you know, again, I, I, no one, I, I just want to encourage folks to know that whatever it is that they're going through, there, there is another side to it, right? This is not, this is not always, this is not all falling apart. Um, but you could identify that if you take the time. And I think we all can do that if we really do take the time to understand human beings and when they're up, when they're down, and when, when they're right in the middle. So 